Oliver Royal, hello. Thanks for being here. Cloak. Hi, welcome. Thanks for being the galaxy of love, everybody. Thank you for the likes. Isabel, hi. Angel, welcome. Santi. Nadia, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it so much. Hello from Greece. How are you? Sophia from Greece. Hi, handsome. Hello, Angel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for calling me last night and breathing heavy into the phone. <laughs> um, that was somebody else. Can you <laughs> stop face me my husband? Tobias, how are you? Thanks for being here. Mary, hello. Todd, welcome. Apple78, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it so much. How are you? Ring, Rangna, hello. Thank you for the likes, everybody. Tobias, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Which Love Ranger expired? Let me catch somebody coming in here all expired. Fluffy Bunny, hello. How's your day been, everybody? How's your weekend so far? It's already Saturday. That's crazy. Time just flying by. Thank you for the likes. Hello, Becca. Becca, what do you have going on? Thank you for being here. Carrie Marie, hello. Sandra, welcome. Michael, hello. Thank you for the likes, everybody. New York 62, welcome. Ash, hello. How are you, Becca? Thanks for being here. Thank you for the likes. Mermaid1994, hello. It's going great, Mermaid. How has your day been so far? A lot of catching up to do today that I already did, thankfully. Thank you for the likes, Angel. Thank you for the likes, everybody. Appreciate it so much. Priyap was good, ready for surgery Monday. Well, that's awesome. Glad everything is going well for you. Thank you for the likes, y'all. Hello, Lauren. How are you? Morgan Alexis, hello. So what's up in the relationship today? You tell me. What's going on with your relationships, John?
Hello, Lynette. I was asking about you. Uh, my love life is fine. Mermaid. 1994. Nothing to... No, um... New things to talk about. I haven't been on a while. How was your Valentine's Day? Morgan, my Valentine's Day was just another day. I didn't do anything. My plans got canceled, unfortunately. How was your Valentine's Day? Thank you for the rose, genetic 690. Been speaking eight weeks. He still has the walls up. After eight weeks, what kind of walls does he have up, Lauren? Official girl boss, Anna. Hello. Hi, Reg. After eight weeks. Hello from Brazil, user 43. Hi. Maria, thank you for the follow. Miss me. Reginald, what you doing? Italian widow dog mom, hello. Your house shopping. Ooh la la. Fun. My Valentine's Day, I unplug from social media platforms for two days. Little R and R, that's awesome. You don't sound enthusiastic about that, about you house shopping? Well, Reginald, I gotta see what houses you're looking at. Then I'll be excited. How's Jess? Um... She seems fine for now. There's um a lot going on there. What you doing? I'm going through emails. What are you doing? Zama Binti eight, hello. Yeah, I'm going through emails while Everybody wakes up. And they want to talk to me today. We don't have any juice going on right now. Likes me a lot. Only girl since X texting. Makes excuses to me. Insecure. He's gained weight. Got you. So he just is afraid you're not really going to like him all that much. Can you smile as flirting? Depends how you smile. You gotta just smile like this. I'm not flirting. If I smile like this, flirting. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, you can have a flirty smile, just a little smirk. You know, I feel like it's in the eyes. Like, don't pay attention to the smile. It's in the eyes. Like, look at the eyes while they smile. That's how you'll know if they're flirting. I missed you, Superman. Well, hello. I don't know if smiling works for flirting. I usually wink at people. <laughs> it works every time. Brenda, hello. How do we feel about... Um, 
What is this? Can this is for cancer research? Mm. It's on the eye contact. They're really all you need to do. Am I an asshole because I don't want to? <laughs> I don't want to do a cancer partnership for free. Eye contact is huge. Does that make me an asshole? Because I feel I feel like their executives are making money. Am I wrong? Like, are the executives at the top of these like cancer research things making money, or is everybody doing it for free? Because if everybody's doing it for free, sure, I'll do it for free too. Hi Oswald. But if your executives are making money, I don't know. I feel like I should be too. Logitech, sports clips, and others come together to support childhood cancer research. Am I an, am I an asshole because I want pain? Like, ugh. Like, is everybody doing it for free? Is what I want to know. Is everybody doing this for free? I have this guy I met in England. Who says he can only think about me. And I'm like, whoa, bro. We only met one time. Well, he can't get you off his mind. Hi, Dr. Smiles. Their goal this year is to raise $100,000. And all donations go to cancer research for children. We have a nice head start thanks to Logitech and Sports Clip sponsoring. But the biggest thing we need is creators and players to hear about the event and hopefully inspire them to fundraise. Marshall, <laughs> you don't want me to do this for free, huh? <sighs> Lauren, thank you for the follow. I don't know. Am I an asshole? Am I an asshole for wanting paid for this? I kind of feel like I'm an asshole. Oh, Naz, hello. Sorry. Like, I can't, I'm not gonna ask you for, I'm not gonna ask for money, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Um, everybody, I encourage everybody to, um, donate to fundraisers, to, donate to fundraisers that research cancer of your choice. But low key, there wasn't even like any chemistry. At least I didn't think so. Reginald, he could be um, anxiously attached and um, very shy. And even though you didn't feel any chemistry and you felt like he was nervous and maybe didn't like you, like maybe on the inside there were fireworks going off every second, you know? Hello, Peggy. Love the color of the room. Thank you. I made it a little more pink today. You seem like a nice person. Well, thank you, Lauren. Um, yeah, Reginald. Like, were you into him? And the only problem is you didn't feel like he was into you. Like, what's your what's your hold up? Also, what's your obsession with dudes from the UK, Reginald? Are you one hundred percent moving there, or no? Just want to say hi. How are you, Peggy? Kathoy 2020. Thank you for the call. Like what's your what's your pause on this guy? It was a friend zone situation. Oh, so you're just not into him. Got you. The sassy Ashley, hello. How are you? I'm not moving there. NHS made it too complicated for me. Oh, I got you. So just stay away. Stay away from the British boys. Since you're not moving. Problem solved. 
I'm over here just solving solving everybody's problems. <laughs> it's the accent, Ken. It gets me every time. Just tell them to, fi to figure it out, you know? Like, just tell them to figure it out. Tell your new boyfriend, hey, figure out how to do a British accent, thanks. You know? It's not hard. It's not hard to do a British accent. Figure it out, love. It's easy. It's the easiest one. What accents make me go in weak in the knees? None of them. I think that's weird. I think... Like, it's one of those... It's one of those societal pressure things. Like, I feel like there are certain things society makes us attracted to, and I think accents are one of them. They're very good at treating you like royalty in the beginning. Every... Look, I'm friends with a lot of British girls, and they all absolutely hate British men. And they just want to come to America and steal us. So even their own, even their own, don't want them, Reginald. But I think the whole accent thing is—it's society. Like society makes us attracted to it. I don't feel like we're actually attracted to it. True facts: one hundred percent of the British girls—they all want American men. Facts. Grass is always greener on the other side. Exactly. Like, British girls love the American accent, and American girls love the British accent. It's, it's Disney did it to us. It's Disney's fault. I feel like Disney pushes, oh my god, he's got a, he's British. Harder than anybody. <laughs> I like actually saw this thing that said, basically women with commitment issues like foreign men, <laughs> because they have a reason it can't work out. British women hate American men, not the ones that I talk to. They all love us. They like Italians. I don't know which ones you you talk to, Reginald. I like that fiery temper. No, I think it's just, um, it's psychology. Like, I don't think it's real. I don't feel like people are really attracted to people with accents. It's just one, it's just one of those things that, um, society makes us think we're attracted to, kind of like tattoos. Like, tattoos were pushed so hard in, like, 2010 as, like, the thing that's attractive. And then it became beards, and then it became dad bods. Like, it's just society. It's just, we're just being manipulated by somebody. Some, like, higher being. Hello, Karen. Hi, Virgo Green. It's probably low-key true, though. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I have commitment issues, though. What about Greek guys? The ones, <laughs> the ones you know in the States, in Greece, they are no-no. I don't... I don't know. I'm about attachment theory. I'm not about where somebody's from. I don't care. I don't care where you're from. Ruthann, hello. Like, how are you with relationships? That's all I care. I don't even have any tattoos. Like, I think, I think the whole, like, tattoo thing is the government. Like, not to get conspiratorial, but... I feel like the government heavily pushed tattoos into our society so that we're easily identifiable you know we're like cattle putting an ear tag on ourselves voluntarily because it makes us look hot or so the government would like us to believe i know the two greek guys and they love bomb like crazy but they're decent is the grass always green <laughs> The grass is always greener to somebody with commitment issues. The grass is always greener to somebody who refuses to look into the mirror and fix themselves. You know, people with a grass is greener syndrome, um, they never they never stop to smell the roses in their own yard, you know. And if you lean a little closer, you see roses really smell like ooh, 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 as Andre 3000 once said. 
Oswald. They never stop and smell their own roses. The grass is always greener on the other side. They don't consider maybe I'm the problem. Maybe this is, relationship isn't working because of me. Like, why am I expecting my partner be, to be perfect? Am I perfect? Am I perfect? Can I, compl can I complain about um, my partner not trying if I'm not trying? You know, like, criticize yourself first. Am I doing the best to be the best partner? And sometimes you are doing your best. But a lot of times you're not. I have a Mickey Mouse stuffed doll and I sleep with it every night until that person comes home. I feel like we could say that about anything like a long time ago. It was considered attractive to be obese. It meant you had money. Yeah, which is society. A society thing. You know, it's like, oh, status. They can, they can afford to eat. <laughs> How are you doing? You're so handsome. Well, thank you. Ruth Ann, thank you for the follow. Me, personally, I would never get one. I have a dolphin tattoo and one that I got in memory of my mom and my dad. How sweet. Hi, handsome. Hello, Allie. Kayla, thank you for the follow. Do you believe in chat GPT? I don't know anything about it. I've never used it. Like, it looks awesome. Um, I personally like some soul in my writing. So everything I write it comes from my heart. It comes from me. And chat GBT is going to lo loses the loses the soul, in my opinion. But, you know, if you just want to make some lazy content, go for it. Everybody who's new here, click the follow button. I smell the daisies, baby. I've, I've been single for 18 years, and I love it. Much love from Texas. Oh, hello. Hello from Ghana. Welcome. Connie B540, thank you for the follow. Violet, hi. Just dropping in to send love to the chat and all the Kens. Love y'all. Thank you, Allie. Winnie, thank you for the follow. Would you date someone you met online? Yes, I would. People online are humans, too. Please accept my request. I don't do guests. I'm sorry. But thank you for being here. I've always wanted a tattoo, but I've never been able to choose what I want. I love everybody. Chris Care, one. You've been single for six years now? You tr you looking for love? You trying to not be single for six years? I'll help you find it, Lauren. I'll help you find the love. RNJM, hello. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here, everybody. Please click the follow button if you're new. Drop those corgis. Everybody who drops a corgi, I'm going to follow you back. User 51, thank you for the follow. Hello, Stephanie. You're welcome, Lauren. Aaron, welcome. Ram, thank you for the follow. Good morning, Stephanie. Haley Blonde, hello. Rama, hello. Be cautious of narcissists, no matter where they are from. They come in all forms and shapes. They do. They do, Sophia. It's very important that we um, know what to look for in a narcissistic relationship. Rama, hello. Sherbe, hello. hello. Thanks for being here. Haley, happy Saturday to you too. Honey, my love, 18, hello. Nigeria, hi. Nanita, thank you for the follow. Hello, my superhero from Indonesia. Hello. Honey, my love, thank you for the follow. What is a turnoff when talking to someone you're interested in? User46, thank you for the follow. Ermay, thank you for the follow. Obsessed with you, thank you. I'm doing great. I'm um, a turnoff when I'm talking when I'm talking to somebody is a turnoff in a talking stage. Let me think. Bad communicators are turn off in a talking stage. Dry texting, turn off in a talking stage. Like, if I have to carry the conversation, like, if all you can say is facts and bet, I'm bored. You know? Like, you could be a 10 out of 10 if your only response is bet. Facts. Bet. 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 Like, if I'm trying to flirt and you just go bet. Which I understand you're trying to flirt back, but, like, let's let, let's... Let's learn to use sentences. <laughs> you know, that's a turnoff. So dry texting, bad texting, bad communicating. That's a turnoff in a talking stage for me. 
Signs for narcissists, Oswald. Um, you want to look for somebody who is low in empathy. You know, like, it ultimately doesn't matter if somebody's a narcissist if you date them. All that matters is if they care when they hurt you. So you don't need to diagnose somebody to leave them. Like, if, they don't, if they're hurting you and they don't care that they're hurting you, they're not willing to change, they're not willing to compromise, leave them. It doesn't matter if they're a narcissist or not. Because um, not every narcissist is grandiose. You know, like, that's, that's the first trait of narcissism, is like this grandiose, larger-than-life figure, because there's covert narcissists who nobody knows except for the person they're in a relationship with. But most narcissists, you'll see, You'll see, you'll see beyond the relationship. You know, they have, they have to be the center of attention. The They're the most charming person in the room, usually. Um, super successful if they're an overt narcissist. You know, it just depends on the person. But mostly look for empathy and leave. You know, like narcissists can be good people for a business. But in a relationship, you know, if somebody doesn't care that they're hurting you, and that's all that matters, Oswald. Like, a diagnosis just doesn't matter at the end of the day. All right, thank you for the follow. What am I doing today, Stephanie? Um, I'm hanging out for a little bit. Della, thank you for the follow. Hi from Kenya. How are you? I'm great. July Queen, thank you for the follow. Slime Quince Grace, thank you for the follow. Happy Saturday to you, too. Enrico, thank you for the follow. I hate one word reply, same. Like, give me something to say back. <laughs> I'll take one word answer one time and, <laughs> and then I'm done. <laughs> Shry, bye, thank you for the follow. Nice guy, well, thank you, Nestia. You look cute, thank you. Victoria, hello. You're single and searching, EM. 818, I hope you find them. Even if they're not an arc, the behavior is still unacceptable. The diagnosis isn't really necessary. Exactly. Exactly. It just doesn't matter if they're a narcissist. Low, low empathy, like, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for people who don't care if I'm hurt. I was in that sort of relationship. I hit rock bottom with it. I'm glad that you're out of it now, Victoria. Widow for nine years. You're sounding like a dream man. Where <laughs> can we find like you? Hello, Danny. You rock out. Thank you. Um, where are you going to find people like me? You're going to find people like me either in a relationship already or in the land of misfits. <laughs> discarded by a narcissist in our early 30s, Sarah. You're going to find us discarded by a narcissist that we tried our hardest to love and we were just never good enough for them. Or you're going to find us in a relationship. That's where we are. <laughs> Are you doing a, a long live? What's the longest the longest live I've done? I've probably done like a three hour live before. Say before, but my ex tell me that she hasn't feel anything with anyone be before me. Oswald, that's a little that's a little red flag from your ex girlfriend. For her to say she hasn't felt anything for anybody before you, and she's willing to give that up and move on. Oswald, your ex-girlfriend giving narc vibes. And I, sometimes I dry dry text on flight when I was in bad mood. And feel that's a reason she left. Oswald, can't can't be blaming yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself, Oswald. They steal your self-esteem. First first sign and off you go. They will distance you from everyone. How long have I been in a relationship? My longest relationship was three and a half years, Sarah. I'm a misfit. Hello, handsome. Good morning. Hello. You might be starving for three hour lives because I like to eat. Amber, thank you for the follow. The first sign of a narcissistic relationship is is probably the devaluing you. Like it just uh it just depends on um what you notice and the signs you look out for. Like if you're dating somebody who really loves friend time, 
And when they go out with their friends, they disappear. They don't really text. They don't really check in. They don't send selfies. They don't, they don't do anything. Like, you don't exist when they're with, with their friends. And if you text them, they're going to make you feel bad for it. They're going to be like, stop blowing up my phone. Like, that's usually one of the earliest signs somebody's probably a narcissist. Is if they um, gaslight you and make you feel like you're controlling or you're jealous because you try and text them and try to try to know what time they're going to be home. Like that stuff happens pretty early on in a relationship is when it's time for girls night or guys night. But an, another early sign could be could be the devaluing you, but they usually do that to their with their friends behind your back first. You know, devaluing you to your face usually doesn't um, happen until later in the relationship. Like, it could happen, but for the most part, it's behind your back to their friends. They're talking shit. You know, like, a healthy person, a good partner is going to be excited talking about you to their friends. They're not going to be like, oh my god, this girl chews with her mouth open. You know, they're not, like, devaluing you and, like, giving giving reasons to their friends why you're not good enough. Like, it'll happen early in the relationship, but usually behind your back. I'm a survivor, and my daughter is turning into one. I'm so sorry for her and myself. All of her ex leave her on her B-day, and her relationship lasts one year until I was there two years and two months. Hello, Susie. They need you to fall for them before they break you down. So obviously I've been with a textbook narcissist for nine years. What's your thoughts on a guy keeping his ex-girlfriend on social media and refuses to delete them? So Sarah, if you're expressing a boundary, if you're expressing a discomfort of them being friends with their ex on social media, I feel like that's a red flag. I feel like that's a red flag that they s still have feelings for them. Unless it's like a close, it's a close friendship. Because I'm very close friends with somebody who's who's like technically an ex like we tried for like a month but she's like my best friend now and she's married and we don't have feelings for each other we're just like really close friends so it just depends on the friendship like are they really close friends or do they not even talk like if they don't even talk and he doesn't want to re remove her and you're uncomfortable that's a little that's a little weird that's a little suspicious did i have my breakfast already i did separated since august my co-worker said hi and they said you're handsome well thank you to to your co-worker i don't have him on social media but we text daily not healthy though around hello stop texting him Susie. if it's not healthy stop it like i don't i don't know it's weird because, like, I, tr I trust me to not cheat because I'm not a cheater. <laughs> it's hypocritical, but I don't feel like I would be okay with my partner having their ex on social media. And again, I understand. I'm being a hypocrite when I say that. But I trust me. <laughs> it's easier said than done, I know, but just just stop talking to them. Have a unique situation. I <laughs> trust me, but not you. <laughs> yeah. Do you talk to more than one person getting to know people or do you stay interested in one? Katrina, thank you for the rose. I used to when I started talking to somebody, I used to focus on one person at a time, but it's bit me in the ass so many times that um I stopped doing that. Like and if they're gonna set the boundary and they're like, look, if you're gonna talk to me, I'm the only person you're gonna talk to, then okay. But once I meet you, like, once we go on the first date, then you have all my attention. But if we haven't met yet, I'm going to talk to other people. I'm going to flirt with other people. Because I, I just can't risk you wasting my time. You know, I can't cut everybody off and then it ends up you wasting my one to two months. You know, while you're fucking dragging out us meeting. 
I think the point of trust is that you're you're taking that risk though. There's always a risk with someone. I'm living on Winchester and my ex-boyfriend won't let me go back home. He has a baby daddy and I have to talk. Is it true when you break up the person who lasts longest single is the one more loyal? Probably. But that lines up. <sighs> yeah, like it just uh, it just depends on the relationship with the ex. You know, like why like how, like how is your relationship? Like it's a red flag to me if you talk shit about your ex of how awful of a person they were or you're like they just won't leave me alone they won't stop texting me and you don't have them blocked like that's weird you know if we're in a relationship and your ex is a stalker and won't leave you alone and you still communicate with them that's a red flag to me 100 percent. but if your ex doesn't really message you you don't really message them you're not really friends and they just happen to still be on your social media it's like whatever like i don't care like I, it just uh, it just depends it depends on the interaction like I'm fine with you being friends with anybody until I'm not anymore. Like, once I have a reason to not be okay with you being friends with somebody, respect my boundary or I'm out. You know, like, that's that's how it was with my um, girlfriend of three and a half years. Like, her, her ex-boyfriend was her photographer, and I was okay with that. You know, like, I was okay with him being her photographer because it's business. But once, when she, like started compulsively lying because you know she was a narcissist and it's like natural for her like she she even realizes she does it you know like i'll call her out on lying about t the tiniest things to her even her friends i'm like why like why do you do that and she's like i don't know like i don't know why i just lie why i just come up with these lies but i do it's because she's a narcissist i know now but in the time i didn't un i didn't understand she didn't understand either but a, a like a little compulsive lie of like um like, I was in Ohio and she was in Chicago. And she was on her way home. She's like, yeah, like, I'm going to get on the I'm gonna get on the train. I'll be home in, like, 30 minutes. And I'm like, why are you on the train? Why don't you just get an Uber? And she's like, the person I'm with has a bike. I was like, oh, okay, you're with, you're with your ex. Like, you could have just told me. Like, I don't have a problem with it. Like, I don't have a problem with you two working together. That's fine. But her trying to hide that's who she was with, it's like... Like, you can just be honest with me. Like, you already know I don't have a problem with you two working together. So, like, the moment that happened, I'm like, mm. Like, y'all can't, y'all can't be friends anymore. Because that's weird. It's weird when they start, they start lying. So, if, if something happens for me to feel uneasy about a friend of the opposite sex, then the friendship's done. The friendship's done. You can be friends with whoever until you can't anymore. Anna, hello. I have a friend you'd be perfect for. Musha and user27, thank you for the follow. Do you think it's a red flag that my boyfriend is irritated he hasn't met my kids yet? How long has it been, Morgan? You ice skate? That's cool. Just here because I have nothing much to do in my life. Aisha, this is the best place to be. Thanks for the follows, everyone. When we started being boyfriend and girlfriend in the first week, I told everyone that she was my girlfriend but with her friend she told that i was her friend oswald i went through the same thing i was the friend for like three months like everybody knew better but the reason i was the friend is because she didn't want to look bad to her friends and family that she already moved on i feel like like looking back i wouldn't be surprised if she was still technically in a relationship with her ex when her and i started seeing each other because that's what she did to me but she hit it, you know? And I feel like that's why she tried to play it off as like, oh, Ken's just my friend. Because um, they were, she didn't want people to see the overlap and be like, oh, something's going on here. Like look, looking back, like I am, I would not be surprised. All right, we're not supposed to waste our time with no one. That's half the lie. He thinks it's because I don't like him enough or I don't trust him. 
but I'm just really protective of them. For sure. How long have you been together? He has morals and knows how women should be treated. Hello, Strawberry. Beneficial for like a month, and we've been talking for three months. I feel like... I feel like being official for a month is a little too soon to meet your kids, but when you're ready, you'll be ready. Hello, Strawberry. Like, maybe you can um, plan something. Like, make it make it something fun. Make it not awkward. You know, like, if you take them to, to, like, an arcade or, like, Chuck E. Cheese or something together. So, like, they're distracted by fun and games, but they also get to meet him. But it's not, like, a weird sit-down. <laughs> I agree he doesn't too bad. It's my decision. I also don't want him to be hurt. Yeah, just ex express that you need to um, take it slow because you don't want you don't want them to get attached to him too. Thank you for the finger hearts, Katrina. And then have to be ripped apart. Because that's unfortunately what happened in my last situation is, you know, her daughters were in love with me. And... I had to let go of them too. And it's not fun for anybody involved. Sandra, hello. He has been fully in our relationship since day one, so I think it feels like <laughs> longer for him. My type, Sarah? Bad bitch, that's my type. And proceed with caution. As you should, Morgan. Protect those babies. Sandra, hello. And we have a connection and everything on the first date and still left. What's your favorite food or restaurant to go to? My favorite type of food, like... It ain't fancy food. Like, I love American food. I love pizza and I love American food. Pizza and burgers, all day. Like, if we go to a restaurant, that's what I'm ordering. Like, nine times out of ten, give me your best burger. Like, fuck your $10,000 steak. I don't give a shit. I want your burger. <laughs> give me your best burger. Give me your finest burger. <laughs> and give me your finest ribeye and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Just get it. Even said I was her first Latino boyfriend. I think you have a good heart. Well, thank you. Why every time I join your live, so I feel like we could vibe really well. Well, Susie, I appreciate that. It's all good vibes in here. We're all good people. Like, I, I, I attract, in general, I attract the good people. You know, I attract the people with a good heart. So if you, if you follow me, like, obviously, obviously there are going to be some sociopaths some narcissists who follow me because um they think i'm attractive i have a following and they can date me and leech off of my status like that's gonna happen but for the most part like nine times nine times out of ten it's people with a good heart who don't understand why people don't appreciate their good heart you know like that's why you find me that's what my videos are about I had the best burger the other day with this jalapeno cream cheese spread. It was... That sounds so good. Aisha, thanks for coming back. And that's what I have to be cautious about, too, is when I'm dating. Because I kind of treat TikTok like a dating app. That does sound... That sounds so good. I kind of treat TikTok like a dating app, so I have to be I have to be careful. Like, is somebody trying to use me, or are they actually into me? You know, are we just two people with good hearts, or are you trying to use me because I have a following, and you think you're gonna get a following if you date me? Like, some people treat me as if I'm this big old celebrity. You know, <laughs> like it's it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing how people think I'm. Like a celebrity. 
Is it real that she move on from her? Thank you so much for the hand hearts, Katrina. Is it real that she move on from her ex eight months, but with me was four months? Sure, Oswald. I don't. I don't know her history. I don't know if she was talking to anybody else in between. Do I have a girlfriend, Sarah? I am talking to somebody. Are we. Like, it can be that way, but, like, we are two, two people with good hearts. Don't forget us along the way, Mr. Celebrity. I don't feel like a celebrity yet. I'll start feeling like a celebrity once I go out and get recognized. I haven't been recognized in the streets yet. I get recognized on dating apps, but never in the streets. But I also haven't been to, like, a big city. Since I've gone viral on TikTok. The level of manipulation in narc relationships is insane. When I was with my ex, I found myself wondering if I was a narcissist. Same, Morgan. That's how I That's how I learned I was dating a narcissist. I talked to a therapist about it. I'm like, am I a narcissist? Because her friend keeps calling me a narcissist. And my therapist is like, nah, you're not a, you're not a narcissist. But this, was, this is what a narcissist is. I was like, oh, I was dating one. Imagine that. Because they, they twist it. They make you feel like you're controlling because you want some respect. Because you don't want to be hurt. You want some communication. So you're controlling. You're this. You're that. You're jealous. Like they just throw labels at you all day. Like if you, try, if you try to threaten their supply collecting, you're jealous. You're insecure. You are controlling. Like how dare you? How dare you try to take away my narcissistic supply? How dare you try to take away my external validation from the outside world because I don't know how to give it to myself? So real narc would never have that level of self-reflection. Exactly. Narcissists can be self-aware. Like, it's not impossible. Like, it's a myth. It's a myth when people say, like, you're not the narcissist because you're questioning if you're a narcissist. That's a myth. So it could it could still be possible that I was a narcissist even though I was questioning it. But um, I do have narcissistic traits for sure. But I'm empathetic as fuck. And I'm a good communicator. Like, how you know you're not the narcissist is you're always bending for the other person. Like, you're always giving in to their needs. Like, you don't step up for yourself. You're bad at setting boundaries. You just give in because you don't want to lose somebody. You know, and that's my reality. Or was my reality. But now I'm way more secure versus anxious. Because by the end of that relationship, I was anxious as fuck. Like, I'm not as anxious... I wasn't as anxious as a lot of people. But I was definitely... I started off the relationship secure. And... The lies just start happening and you get more and more anxious. You get, you more and more question, like, why am I not good enough? You know, because that's what they do. They're masters at it. They're masters at making you feel like you're not good enough for them. Like, you're not, you're not worth them putting in effort. You're not worth them coming home. Like, why would they, why would they want to come home for you? You know, like, sure, you rush, you rush to get home to them. You know, like, if you have a business trip, you're going to get home as soon as possible because you love them and you miss them. If they have a business trip, like they don't even book a return flight. They're going to stay a couple days for fun. <laughs> you know? So they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about you. She said I was controlling for just asking who is with her when she's when she's doing I only ask for respect. Yeah, um I never asked my partner who she was with because like that that's a boundary she set in the beginning. She didn't I kind of set that boundary for her because, like, she would complain about, like, her ex would always ask who she's with. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm going to just trust. Trust her. Like, it doesn't matter who she's with. Like, I trust her to not cheat. But, um... Oops. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I feel like he's self-aware, but I don't think I'm not empathetic. I, f I feel the same way you do. I think we all have some traits. Because giving in is easier than fighting with them. It's exhausting. Exactly. You just you just let them have their way. Because they're going to have their way no matter what. Like, even if they... Like, with a narcissist, like, they'll pretend... They'll pretend to go along with your boundaries. And then when the time comes, you know, they live by ask for forgiveness, not for permission. You know? If they're like, yeah, I'll come... I'll come home in a week instead of in two weeks... You know, when the time comes, they're going to have an excuse. They're going to 
guilt you so that they can extend it to two weeks like they've always wanted. You know, the moment they agree, it's like, okay, how can I s still get what I, what I want? How can I twist this to make them feel guilty if they try and push back? After I've already agreed, agreed to these boundaries, but how can I twist this? How can I make them feel guilty for wanting me to um, live up to the boundary that they set and that I agreed to? Spawn and send it to you. I told him that today he will do what he wants despite how I feel. Trust comes first. A bit of trust, yes. You can have a dash of trust at the beginning, but you ultimately have to earn trust. Trust is earned. Full trust is earned. Initial trust given. I'll give you the benefit of, of the doubt because I believe for the most part people are good and they mean well. And they don't, a majority of people don't mean to be assholes. I feel that you're going to get tired if you keep, <laughs> keep talking about my ex. Not Oswald. I, under, I understand why you want to talk about it. I understand why you want to talk about her so much and your questions because I was there a year ago. I was there a year ago wondering like what did I do wrong like how is this my fault Oswald your ex kind of sounds like a narcissist to be honest your ex sounds very narcissistic she might have been a narcissist ninja baby hello I'm talking about mine too much like it's therapeutic to talk about your ex so I'm here for it you know you guys want to vent about your exes your relationship your struggles like I'm here for it because I understand I was there that's all I wanted to talk about too and my friends were like bro <laughs> we can't we can't anymore. <clears throat> but I'm here for y'all to talk about whatever you want and help you understand why you went through what you went through. Like, Oswald, if you did your best <clears throat> and you still question <clears throat> what did I do wrong, by the end of the relationship, like, why did they throw me away? I was doing my best. Where, like, where wasn't I doing my best? Like, I don't understand. I'm so confused. There, You were probably being manipulated in that whole relationship. Like, to be honest. Like, if that's your thought is, like, I was so good to them. But where, but where were the parts that I weren't good? Like, why did they leave? Why did they throw me away? You're probably being manipulated. Like, it's awesome that you're self-reflecting and seeing what you need to work on for the future. But if you're confused by a breakup, if you're confused, like, I was doing my best, what's going on? Like, why aren't you fighting for me? You're probably manipulated. You're probably gaslit the entire time to make you feel like you were the problem. Even though you are doing your best. It would be different if he was fully in the past, but he literally lurks around. Aww. Even I feel like love is a mythical creature that never existed. No, I never feel like that, Amber. I feel like love exists because I've felt it. I know what it feels like. I've been manipulated this whole time. It's played it, how, but how to recover. He's literally told me I'm the problem, and I don't understand how. Susie, how you recover is confidence, learning to love yourself, understanding who you are, understanding you did the best that you could, and that you're going to keep working on yourself. You know, we need to work on ourselves every day. I'm still working on myself. I'm not the, I'm not perfect. And we can never, we can never be perfect, but we all need to strive for it every single day. We constantly need to work on ourselves, read self-help books, understand the psychology, like understand our own psychology, understand what's going on in our, our own mind and how we can be, be better, how we can self-soothe. How we can be a better communicator. Like, always working on being the best version of us that we can be. Like, that's that's how you recover from it. Like, just understand, like, you did your best. You did your best, and next time you're going to be better. Because you're going to keep growing. And um, you're going to get to the point where you're so sure of yourself doing your best. And that it's not being reciprocated. 
that you're going to learn how to set boundaries. You're going to learn how to communicate boundaries. And if they don't step up, you let them go. You know, you set ultimatums. Like, the, this needs to change or I'm gone. Instead of being a people pleaser and, like, letting them get away with shit. Trust, trust, communication, respect. That's the key to have a good relationship. Exactly. She said that I hurt her just because I said I was manipulate selfish and time will tell if we are together. And therapy. Yes, therapy. I just don't see how you can toss me aside for nine years doing the best I can. He doesn't respect my boundaries, and he knows I'm gone, but uses my insecurities against me. That sounds like a narcissist, Susie. And like you said, you already know he's a narcissist. So there's your answer. He's a narcissist. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's no other explanation needed other than they're a narcissist. That's all you need to know about them. It's a reality. Dating a narcissist is like dating a child in an, in an adult's body. They're children. They're um, emotionally stunted. When I get mad, I used to ignore her because I don't want to say something bad to her and hurt her. User 19, hello. You deserve a good heart, thank you. Um, I'm going to get off of here. I love and appreciate you all so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for the follows. And I'll see you tonight in the love shed. Follow me on Instagram, at Gaming. Click the follow button if you're new. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Morgan.